nice. It's a privilege to have him here uh, give a session. And uh, uh, Dilip, I just wanted to mention that we have about uh, almost 30 uh, teachers that have recently taken advantage of this uh, COVID environment and uh, they have graduated. Some are RYT 200, some 300, some 500. And so they are also looking forward to some guidance from you about, uh, you know, uh, uh, some uh, you know, more uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, development in uh, uh, yoga therapy. Uh, and also you, know, uh, you have many other students uh, uh, that are going to attend the classes and also your uh, you know, uh, good friends here. So with that, uh, uh, we can start it. Thank you, Sri. And it reminds me of all the pre-pandemic days in Washington, D.C. I'm not too far, you know, I'm about what? Three and a half hours from D.C. And I've been here about 45 years in this area. So today, as we were saying, that we have all the new yoga teachers. We have very seasoned yoga practitioners with us. We have a long-standing yoga therapy teachers with us. And one of my interests, and I can tell you is one of my speciality today, is how to integrate yoga therapy in Western medicine. Uh, I've been doing it for a long time. Uh, people, few people might know here, and Sri knows very well. I've been with a, a association in Washington, D.C. called Life in Yoga, Rajan Narayan, myself and a teacher from Harvard, uh, uh, our Sadhbir Khalsa. We have been teaching the physicians, actually started the first ACCME, it's called Accreditation Council for Continuing Medical Education, for the physician, continuing medical education, yoga therapy for healthcare providers started in 2010, almost 11 years, and we're still continuing. We'll be doing it twice a year, May and September. Now it will be all in online. And uh, I just want to tell you one more thing. I've been a president of uh, International Association of Yoga Therapists for five years, and we have introduced a a standard accreditation, certification, and we made the yoga therapy as a separate specialty, as a part of called integrative medicine. Now, let me take a few moments, a few minutes, because of the teachers and what we're talking about and where we start and where we go. That will be a nice practice session. You will see how do, how do we do the practice session, how to integrate. First of all, if you are just a brand new graduate of a yoga program, and if you're in a yoga class or yoga studio, I can guarantee you 75 to 80% people will come to you for an underlying chronic medical condition. They're not going to come to say, I want to just learn how to have, you know, have the asanas, how to do a pranayama or meditation. So your approach will be, what is called a, a therapeutic yoga. Now, historically, all of us, we know that yoga is a spiritual practice. When we as a physician, we have few other physicians also in the audience, we as a physician started incorporating yoga in our daily practice, in our daily uh, patients management, we got a big approach, you know, called medicalization of the yoga. We're not talking about medicalization of the yoga. What you're talking about, it is a part of what is called integrative medicine. What is an integrative medicine? Integrative medicine today is defined as a wisdom of our traditional system of healing, primarily yoga therapy with the signs of our modern medicine. We're not rejecting anybody. We're incorporating, integrating, for a better outcome. Look at the modern medicine. Modern medicine is great for all the acute care, but it has failed tremendously for chronic diseases. 
simple back pain, migraine, headache, you can name it, diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol. You know, you're carrying this burden. This is called a morbidity. What a practice, daily practice of yoga will do is called a reduction of morbidity. So before we start, let me go over with you, especially the new teachers, the questions people are going to ask you on how to incorporate a yoga in your daily health care. The first, as you all know, that the word yoga means union, it's a union of your body, mind, and spirit. It's a philosophy, Yoga Sutra Pitanjali. Think about 196 sutras, of which 193 is how to do a quiet down your mind. Chitta Vritti Niroda. Practice eight limbs. And you have to all remember by, by heart, yam, niyam, asam, pranayam, pratthara, dharam, and samadhi. And it was designed for self-realization, outcome of self-realization. It was never designed for any therapeutic outcome. But during the process of the practice, we started seeing a lot of health benefits. And primary health benefit we saw is that rogi chikitsa, treatment of a disease, and the shvastarok, maintenance of health. This maintenance of the health brought is called the resilience. I did a program yesterday, yoga therapy called Building Resilience. Resilience is like that, you, know, you have, a, you have like elasticity. You have, a, you have a stick, if you bend it, let it go, it'll come back to normal. This is called your default mode network. We call it a reset mode. Our body has the own healing power. You let the healing power, you learn how to activate the healing power, then you bring the health. Health is a balance of your body, mind, and spirit. So a proper well-being is a balance of your physical, mental, spiritual health and able to unlock. Remember, able to unlock the ability for your body's own healing power. Our body produces every medicine you take. You take a beta blocker, you take an ACE inhibitor, you take an aspirin, you take a statin. Our yoga practice will generate everything. We call it a medicine cabinet of our mind. From a computer standpoint, if you look at a computer standpoint, my body is the hardware, mind is the software, spirit is the programmer. Who is the programmer? I am the programmer. I program my software to fix my hardware. So practice of yoga is going to fix your software. So hardware will get fixed. In a Western medicine, you're always fixing our hardware. And we have a, a tremendous lack of outcome. So for all of you, what you will need to understand is that yoga therapy is an adaptation. And what was the adaptation? That during the process of your practice of Patanjali, Yoga Sutra, Patanjali Ashtang Yoga, it was infiltrated with the mudras, bandhas, kriyas, Ayurvedic philosophies. And it became what is called the Yoga Chikitsha. Yoga therapy. So what is it yoga therapy is and what you are as a yoga therapist means, why you are so interested and why do you have a, such a long training program? You can be a yoga teacher in 200 hours of 300 hours of teacher's training, but for yoga therapist in the 800 hours, 1000 hours, some places 1500 hours. That you are able to learn how to pick and choose the same practices from the Yoga Sutra, from the Ashtanga Yoga, and use it appropriately for the person who has underlying 
physical condition. A person comes to you with a physical ailment, you know, comes to your back pain, knee pain, hip pain, you learn how to take care of that. People comes with the respiratory issues, comes with asthma, COPD, pulmonary fibrosis, you know how to approach them. People come with a mental neuropsychiatric disorder, so you know how to approach them. That means you are not bound by the so-called rules and regulations of the yoga practice, which you are used to doing it. We are doing yam, niyam, asan, pranayam, pratahar, dharan, dhan, samadhi. This is our regular practice. But you will see now, when I'm going to show it to you, that we'll be incorporating, we'll be incorporating mudras, bandhas, kriyas, We'll be incorporating our daily lifestyle. It's called Dinacharya. We'll be incorporating our, your lifestyle as a part of your therapy. Now let's face it. Here is a person comes, you are in the, your class or you're in the studio. A person doctor asks him that, yes, you have a diabetes or you have a back pain or you have hypertension, please go and see that yoga therapist. He or she may not even heard what yoga is. We see it all the time. The orthopedic surgeon sends a patient to the physical therapist. When they go to physical therapist, says, why am I here? What am I going to do? Physical therapist guides you. Here a physician sends a patient to you. Because today, we as a physician, we look at the data, national, Library of Medicine, the data comes from called PubMed. If you go to Google, if you do PubMed, if you just put in the search engine, yoga therapy, you will get over 5,000 articles, yoga therapy for various medical conditions. And these are all PubMed approved journals. These are not the throwaway journals. These are approved journals. Present day, if you do COVID, if you put a desktop yoga therapy for COVID-19, you'll say over, well, let's say last time I saw a few months back, about over 55 articles. I just had a beautiful article, a Brahmri Pranayam for COVID-19. A very prestigious journal, Indian Journal of uh, uh, Autolaryngology. Because a nasal breathing secretes called a nitric oxide. We'll come about that. Okay, here comes the first person who has never seen, never done yoga, coming to you. I have a chronic low back pain. My doctor asked me to start yoga. The first practice you do in yoga practice is the two first two components. In Sanskrit, it's called Merudanda Achal and Manasthi. Merudanda Achal means you have to keep your spine straight. And the reason for that is the outcome of a practice of yoga is called relaxation response and activation of parasympathetic tone. What does it mean? I'm exercising. Why should I do yoga? Exercise is a muscle contraction. Exercise is a sympathetic overdrive followed by parasympathetic activation. What does it mean? In exercise, my heart rate goes up, my blood pressure goes up, my respiratory rate goes up higher, my blood sugar goes higher, my muscle gets into a state of contraction. It is called sympathetic overdrive. Our body has a homeostasis, body has a kind of default mode network, then it brings a parasympathetic activation. So after exercise, what I do, I look at my pulse, how low is my pulse? That is called parasympathetic, calm and digest. In a yoga practice, what we do, we stay in the posture. We hold the posture for an extended period of time to bring 
a relaxation response. See, our skeleton. So yoga therapy practice is a primary activation of the muscle relaxation instead of contraction. It is a primary activation of parasympathetic tone. And the reason we are saying with the physician, see this day, we are doing it for a long time. This is our health tracker. This is the Apple Watch. And you know what it is? It is recording my heart rate, my blood pressure, my EKG, my sleep tracker, everything is all recorded here. And I'm doing it, I always have it with me. So we're telling you from a physiological data which you have collected. So how to elicit the relaxation response? My skeleton, if you keep it, my skeleton, if you keep them, always will fall in the front. The muscles in my back called paraspinal muscles, this muscle keeps contracting and keeps my spine straight. So when you put your hand, there's a two piece of stone sitting here. So what we need to do, we need to keep my spine straight. I sit down, if I can sit down in the ground, we're sitting, there's a nice sukhasana, and I'll show you how to get into slowly and slowly in different asanas. Asanas will come to you. You don't have to ask for asanas. If you're sitting in a chair, sit down in a chair, sit all the way to the back. Always keep your spine straight. And remember, yoga as a therapy is not that one hour of practice you do. Yoga therapy is out of the mat what you do for next 23 hours. It is a state of mind. It is a way of being. It is the wellness which carries with you all the time. I'm sitting here, the Sukhasa. Next, what you do, if somebody is like, you know, sit in the ground, sit in a chair. So let's get a chair. See how to show it to you, how to sit in a chair. When you sit in a chair, so this is a this is a regular this is a regular chair. So you sit in a small regular chair, and we'll show it to you how to sit down in a chair. You will sit in a chair. You'll sit in the front, but you'll keep your spine straight. If you even go to the back, go to the back, keep your spine straight. That's the way you will sit down all the time. That's the way you sit down when you are having your dinner. That's why sit down and driving your car. This is the first act for yoga therapy, Merudanda Achala. Somebody says, my feet doesn't touch the ground. Put it in a folded blanket, put something, but always keep your body in a right angle posture. This will start this yoga therapy practice. For us, what we do, and I've been doing it for a long, long time, let me show you to what, what I use. I use what is called a kneeling stool. You should see all of them. This is a wonderful, I have it for years and years. I will sit down always in a kneeling stool. I sit down in a kneeling stool like this. And I'm using my computer. These days we're always in the front of the computer. I'm in front of the computer. I'm in front of sitting down. I'm always in a kneeling stool. And I have two of them, you know, every table has a kneeling stool. So my, so when I touch my back, I have a two like a soft pillows here. The tightness of my back is gone. Also remember, the back pain, we have a neurologist here, you know, he knows, the back pain is not due to your herniated disc, not due to your spinal stenosis, you know, it's an irritation of the nerve. It's a contraction of the muscles, which causes pain. So for a back pain, if you give a pain medication, it doesn't work. What it works, it's called muscle relaxant. So yoga therapy practice the muscle relaxant. So incorporate spine straightening all the time. See what I will do. I'll get up in the morning. I'll get up in the morning. 
and get up in the morning, I'll keep myself, my body straight. I'll go maybe, I'll go maybe against the wall. I go in the morning, I'll go against the wall, my heel, my hips, my neck and the head. My whole body is straight. I wake up in the morning, I put myself. When I walk, I walk with my ear, tadasana, shoulder, hips, ankle, all in the same line. So, keeping your spine straight is the first beginning of your yoga therapy. And remember, when a person comes, you are a yoga practitioner, okay, let's start. We'll do a set of sun salutation. We'll do a few Kapalbhati Pranayama. We'll do a little Strika Pranayama. But the patient will say, thank you, goodbye. They will be gone. You have to meet the person where they are. You have to bring them slowly in stages. We call it in stages, impossible become possible. Do not practice any physical posture asanas after a pain medication. Do not start with the pain medication because you sit down. You are sitting down, you are putting a sukhasana. Put, your, put the knees underneath your knees and put it down and you feel pain. The moment you feel pain, you have crossed the balance of the physical body. So what you need to do, you come to a posture where you don't feel pain, but you feel what is called a comfortable discomfort. And you stay in this posture. What it does, it's called neuroplasticity. Our brain will get a signal and brain slowly will allow us to sit down like this. And remember, I'm sitting like this. My brain is allowing me to sit like this. Why? Because I have given a repeated input in my brain. It takes about 20, 30, 40 inputs to get the neuroplasticity. When I am sitting in a posture, in asanas, remember this, this is a very important uh, stages of the asanas. In Sanskrit, it's called arumbha. Arumbha is the beginning. In the beginning, the muscle will contract, ligaments will tighten up, it will let me come to a posture. If you stay in the posture, then I will go by little slow by slowly, how do you stay in the posture? If you stay in the posture, the muscle starts to relax. Before relaxing, muscle goes a little fasciculation, it will have a little twitching. That is called a sthiti. And the only asana who is a therapeutic asana is called sthiram sukham asana. This asana, I'm sthir. There is no fasciculation. I'm sukhi, I'm very comfortable. Then asana. Finally, it's called the visharjan. Visharjan means the profound relaxation. Arumho sthiti visharjan. Visharjan is a therapeutic asana. Next, what happens? Our all the ailments of the bodies and the maintenance of the health is due to our balance. Our balance only comes when you activate both sides of your brain. I'm right-handed, right-footed. I'm always using my left brain. You have to learn how to use your both sides of the brain equally. Why? As simple as it is, you have a cycle. You have a motor, you have a bike. If one, if one tire doesn't work properly, the whole system is not going to work. So you have to have equal pump and equal work. So if I'm sitting like this, what I do, I change my foot, I sit down in the opposite. If you're practicing with me, try that. See what will happen. You feel uncomfortable. You're uncomfortable on the posture when you are sitting like this. 
So what do you do in yoga therapy? You practice it for a longer time. Next thing, what do you do? You need to quiet down your mind. How to quiet down your mind? Your hand is the connected between a body and mind. Mudras. So hand mudras are the wonderful therapeutic outcome. In fact, I'm doing a program for Sri Lanka uh, end of this month, neurophysical outcome of the mudras. Think, think about it. something you like. What do you say? You say this before you can talk. Or if you want something, your hand will come up before you can say, give it to me. So in your hand, you will see always people will put their fingers together. This is called a Hakini Mudra. Try it. Try touch tip of your fingers. This quiets down your mind, it puts a focus. I've seen so many times, I personally, I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to them, my hand will come like this without me knowing. I've seen it, I've done so many candid cameras. Somebody is listening to a conference, you know, paying attention, hands are like this. Hakini Mudra. Practice Hakini Mudra. When your mind is agitated, you do a mudra, it's called your Shankar Mudra. In two hands, try this. If you want to do with me, see, these are the way you approach in a patient who has no understanding. They also have underlying panic, fear, and anxiety when they come to visit you. Shankar Mudra, right hand wraps around your left thumb. Left hand wraps around your right hand. Touch your index finger and thumb. This looks like a Shankar, Kongshir, Shankar Mudra. Try it. Do the opposite. Remember, always balance the opposite. Left hand touches your right thumb. Right hand wraps around your left hand. Touch your index finger and thumb. Shankar Mudra. Then what happens in yoga therapy now? I'm in a profound level of relaxation because mind is quieting down. I go for the next step. It is called the Siddhasana. Take my heel all the way to the back. I take my foot in the top and look at that. My knees drops down on its own. I don't do anything. If my knees are here, I let it be here. Because if I push it down, what will happen? It will go back high up like this. But when my mind quits down, when I develop that Aramho, Sthiti and Visharjan, when I develop the Sthiram, Sukham, Asanam, this thing is going to happen. Then we access our subtle body. What is a subtle body? Subtle body is the body of my mind. Gross body, subtle body, and causal body. Sthulo Shari, Shukha Shari, and Karana Shari. Sulo Shari is the physical body, Sukha Shari is the mind, Karana Shari is our spirit. So what happens when I close my eyes, I can clearly see my whole body. With my eyes closed, I can see my hand, I can touch the tip of my nose, I can touch my left thumb, I can touch my right great toe, touching my left knee. I don't have to see anything. I'm clearly seeing. In fact, I'm clearly seeing my body. I'm clearly seeing my body. I'm in, a, in a, uh, Baltimore. I'm in a life in yoga. I'm in a CME. I'm entering the door. I'm in the class. I'm starting to teach clearly see my body. What does it mean? What does it mean now is that the mudras you've been doing, see if you can do the eyes closed. Try this. Eyes are closed. I'll take a look at me. My eyes are closed. My right hand wraps around my left thumb. Left hand wraps around my right hand. Touch index finger and thumb. I don't need to see. So what happens if you don't remove the underlying pathogen from your subtle body, there will be no permanent cure for the chronic lifestyle-related disorders. Left hand wraps around your right thumb, right hand wraps around. It's a wonderful practice. Keep doing it and you will see all the patients will love you. All the patients will keep on coming to you. 
balancing both sides of the brain. Shurabhi mudra or dhenu mudra. Two hands. I will be touching the opposing fingers. My right index finger will touch left middle finger. Right middle finger will touch left index finger. Right ring finger will touch the little finger. My little finger will touch my ring finger. Both the thumb is like an udder of a cow. Shurabhi mudra or dhenu mudra. Touching opposing fingers in your hand, activating both sides of your brain. Do it opposite. Left hand, left index finger will touch right middle finger. Left middle finger touches right index finger. Right little finger touches left. Left little finger touches right ring finger. Left ring finger touches right little finger and the thumb. Now look at accessing subtle body. Before subtle body, okay, let's proceed. From here, see, now remember my software. My mind is getting fixed. You know, these are like, you know, you have an iPhone, you get those software updates. So you get the software updates. I can put your feet high up, sit down. This is your Orzo Padmasana. Now you get a pain, you get a pain, you back off. Find a posture where you don't have any pain. So if you take a pain medication, and if you keep practicing your asanas, you lose this protective phenomena and you hurt yourself. So somebody says, oh, he's an opium addict. He's taking a pain medication and he came for it. It's fine, put him on a chair. Don't let him go to physical posture. Slowly do his breathing. And I'll show it to you how to introduce your pranayama also very slowly. Another concept you have to learn is that the five koshas, Anamaya kosha to pranamaya kosha to manamaya kosha to vigyanamaya kosha to anandamaya kosha. Any imbalance you create in the physical body, it will show up in your breath. Pranamaya kosha. So what will happen you will be like, like me. You are in any posture, you'll be able to talk. You may be able to sing even, because you have to be effortless breathing. The moment you put an effort in breathing, that's not a therapeutic yoga. Whole yoga practice is called an effortless ease. This is disease, D-I-S, Space here, this is the treatment is called an effortless ease. I'm doing, and this is my 24 7. Activating one side of the brain, go ahead and activate other side of the brain. Now, what you do, my eyes are closed, I'm activating my subtle body, I'm going to do a dhenu mudra with my eyes closed. My eyes are closed. I'm touching the right index finger to the left middle finger. Right middle finger to the left index finger. Right ring finger to the left little finger. Right little finger to the left ring finger, touching the thumb. I'm in a comfortable situation of doing, activating both sides of my brain, even in my subtle body. This is therapeutic yoga. I teach everybody, Start using your left hand. If you're right hand, you're using first start using brushing your teeth with the left hand. When you start brushing your teeth, what will happen? Your brush will be all over. You never come close to your mouth. Slowly, when you bring it, I do it all the time now. You will brush with your left hand. You're brushing your teeth. You know what will happen when you brush your teeth? Your hands, right hands will be doing like this. Why? Because your brain has a signal you brush with the right hand. I do everything with my left hand now. I'm almost ambidextrous because of my practice. And look at what is happening now. Now I will be sitting in a Padmasana, lotus pose, but I'm in a profound relaxation response. A person who will say, if you get into the, if I, if I could get into the Padmasana right away, 
But if you look at Master Rider, oh, look at that, how difficult it looks. Oh, it is so painful. So immediately I come off. No, you go in stages. We say in stages, impossible become possible. So when I am there and look at me now, I think Vinod will appreciate me more. I have a saliva in my mouth. I've been talking to you for the last 40 minutes. You don't drink it daily. Saliva is called parasympathetic activation. When you get scared, when you're fearful, you get a dry mouth. But in my practice, I'm activating my parasympathetic tone. I'm activating my parasympathetic tone. So I will be able to sit down comfortably. And people always ask me, you know, oh, You know, I'm, I'm 39 and holding on my chronological age, but I'm practicing medicine for 50 years. So, you know, all at your age, how can you do all this stuff? I do it because I practice it daily. And look at that. When you are in a relaxation response, when you have an activation of parasympathetic tone, you feel a sense of levitation. Put my hand on both sides. I just push a little bit, my whole body will go high up, stay here. Tulasana. I can stay here for a long, long period of time. I'm talking, I'm breathing, I'm totally effortless. It's not doing asanas. You prepare yourself, your body and mind, asana will come to you. Hand mudras. Next comes your mind. In yoga, what is mind? Mind is a content of your five senses. I see, I hear, I smell, I taste, and I touch. If you put all the contents of the five senses, it becomes your mind, Manomaya Kosha. When contents of the five senses become processed, it becomes your buddhi. That is a wisdom. That is a Vigyanomaya Kosha. When that buddhi becomes more processed, it becomes your wisdom. That's your anandamaya kosha. So wonderfully explained, and you feel it within yourself, all these things. So the next one will approach that, how to quiet down your mind. Where to quiet down our mind is to able to activate our, the power of breathing. Lung is like a balloon. It has a six liter capacity. It needs 1.5 liter to keep the lung open. The 4.5 liter of air, which you can exchange by a good controlled respiratory breathing. But normally we call tidal volume. The air we breathe in is only 500 cc, half a liter. 80 to 90% lung is reserved and we activate that. Next is all the muscles of respiration are called skeletal muscles. They can be trained. You know, like you can take a, you know, I have this dumbbell here. This is my, my, my gym, you know, I have my treadmill, I have my bench, I have my, have my weights. And next to that, I don't know if you can see from the distance, that is my Patanjali. That's the statue of my Patanjali. I got it from India. And it stays here. This is my place. Nobody bothers me. I practice here. I mean, I'm from the, they get from the whole world. So you learn first, you have to practice how to breathe out. See, you are here. First, you say, you know, to take a deep breath in. All this air is sitting in the top of the residual carbon dioxide sitting here, which is almost no use because that is called a dead space. So first we do relaxation. And we learn yoga from the babies. So in the hand is called Balo Mushti Mudra. The way the babies are relaxed. See if I relax, your hands get separated. Look at the fingers. Fingers will be separate. When I tie the fingers will be tight. Relax, fingers will go like this. These are all the relax, signs of relaxation. You know, these are called your emancipation. So if you look at a baby, baby will close their hand, they'll put thumb inside and close. 
try this. This is called Adhi Mudra, Balo Mushti Mudra. You can put your hands in the front, you can do it. Do the breathing. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Do the Adhi Mudra. Close it. Do the eyes closed. The moment you do the eyes closed, you get a wonderful practice. Lids get tightened up. Breathe in, breathe out. Mani Bandhanaman. Mani Bandhanaman is your wrist relaxation. You relax your shoulder. You can put your hand in the shoulder, put the elbows together, breathe out first, take a deep breath. Always remember, listen to your body. See, it is not a competition. It is listening to your body. If you come up to here, you feel pain, back off. If you feel pain here, back off. Start where you can start an effortless, pain-free practice with a normal breathing. For us, we can come here, it's okay. Breathe out first, take a deep breath in, and slowly rotate your shoulder. It's a ball and socket joint. It looks like a wonderful relaxation practice. It looks so simple that people might say, what is happening? But it is a profound therapeutic outcome. Do opposite, breathe in here, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. It's a wonderful practice. You do that. I will do it in the neck called Brahma Mudra, upper part of the body called Pashtim Namaskar. This is the way we bring people in our therapeutic outcome. Always remember, yoga practice is a holistic. It's a global. It is not a reductionist. So when you come and say, I want to do yoga therapy for diabetes, you have a hyper, oh sure. I have everything for that, but you need to start a global, holistic way at the beginning. Otherwise, you will never get any therapeutic benefit. The whole Western medicine is reductionist. I have a pulmonologist, I have a, you know, cardiologist, I have a nephrologist, I have a neurologist. Yoga therapy is a global, my whole body and mind. When I learn how to relax my neck, my back muscles get relaxed. My knees get relaxed. Chronic pain comes from tightness. Remember, people call arthritis. Oh, my joint is gone, my cartilage is gone. Your cartilage is gone, but cartilage doesn't have any pain fiber. What it does, body puts in a, call your splinting. Body, you know, if you've broken bone, what did you put a plaster because body, it tightens up your ligaments, tightens up the muscles. Remember, all the nerve fibers for the pain are in the ligaments of the muscles. So now I have a problem with my both my knees. But able to do this, I'm able to live a comfortable life with the underlying osteoarthritis, underlying damage to my both the knees. It's not bothering me. But I have the underlying condition. I learned how to live with my morbidity. This is called a compression of morbidity. We are going to have a wonderful life. And the day comes, we'll drop dead. I do an Adi Mudra. Then I close my eyes. Keep my spine straight. I breathe out first. Take a slow deep breath in. Then I breathe out longer than breathing in. Take a slowly, take a deep breath in. Breathe out longer than breathing in. Inhalation is sympathetic. Exhalation is parasympathetic. Purok, kumbhok, and recha. Then if you want to count, you can do count of three in, count of six out, count of four in, count of eight out. 
We have been doing it for so long, we can do easily count of 10 in, count of 20 out. You won't see any, any change in anything at all us. I've lived with so many yogis. You'll be sitting next to me, you'll be breathing. You will never even hear he or she is breathing. So let me show it to you. I know you want to see it, what the practice looks like. Let me breathe out first. I will breathe in, count of six in, count of 12. And see, it reduces your respiratory rate. Normal respiratory rate is around 15 to 16 per minute. If I can even take two seconds in and four seconds out, six seconds for a cycle, our respiratory rate drops down to 10. If you can do four seconds in, eight seconds out, it'll drop down to five. And see in the old animal world, animal who breathe faster, they die early. Animal was a slow breathing, they live longer. Then when you practice this slow breathing, your neuroplasticity sets in, your brain sets in. So even breathe like that when you're sleeping. My wife always tells me, yeah, I see you when you sleep. Your, ex your exhalation is longer. Okay, let me show it to you. Six seconds in, 12 seconds out. Breathe out first. Very easy for me because I've been practicing daily. I can do eight seconds in, 16 seconds out. Sorry. You know, all the disease will be scared of the disease will say, I want to come to close to this body. That is called resilience. That is called your shasparokha. Three stages breathing called dirghoshash. You fill up lower part of the lung, middle part of the lung, upper part of the lung. When you lower part of the lung, your abdomen goes up a little bit. Middle part, your chest expands. Upper part, the clavicle goes high up. When you get a three stages breathing, that's a sign of your health. When you have the sign of the health, this is all come to you. A Brahmri Pranayam. In a Brahmri Pranayam, you shut down all of your five senses. Then you create a frequency, sound of a Brahma, B. Your brain has a frequency. And we have a neurologist here, and he understands very well. The two frequencies, when they Colloids it call a harmonic resonance. In a harmonic resonance, either all the frequency goes down or frequency accentuates. You might hear the story Tanshin. Tanshin used to sing and break a glass. What is the frequency of his singing and the frequency of the glass? It cracks in harmonic resonance, it breaks. So in a Brahmri Pranayam, your total mind quite stops. So practice the Brahmati Pranay. Do it a couple of times. Let me show it to you. Index finger in the forehead. Use your three fingers to close your eyes. And the thumb close your ear. And close your mouth. Your eyes are closed. Mouth is closed. Ears are closed. Always breathe through your nostril. Do not breathe through your mouth. Mouth is for talking and for eating. We'll breathe out through your nose, breathe in through your nose, and breathe out with the sound of a bumblebee. Mm -hmm. Then you'll 
pumping and cupping. Take both the hands, keep rubbing. Keep rubbing, keep rubbing your hands, keep rubbing your hands. When you feel the warmth in your hand, if you're wearing glasses, remove your glasses. Take the hands, put it over your eyes like a cup. Let the eyes take all the heat from your hand. It relaxes, relaxes the ciliary muscles. Ciliary muscles are relaxed. Your lens get more convex. You don't need the reading glasses. I've never seen a yogi wearing glasses, including me. Massage your forehead. All the muscles of the facial muscles are attached to your skin. It takes out all the, your, all the wrinkles, all the lines in the forehead. Massage your face. Massage your ear, behind the ear, in front of the ear, inside your ear canal. This is called the auricular branch of a vagus nerve. It activates the vagus nerve, which is a parasympathetic activation. Bring your hand. Massage the front of your neck. It's called massaging your carotid sinus. Carotid sinus activates your parasympathetic activation. Massage in the back of your neck. By the time you do this, you'll be amazed how easily you can do a Surya Namaskar or how easily you can do a, even your Sheshashan, Sarvangasan, Halasan. For me now, I'm in a state, you name an asana, I can do it. I do a perfect headstand, I do a perfect shoulder stand, because it all came to me. So then, when you are going to practice, let's see, the balancing in both sides. So if you do a, say, hub balancing both sides asana, or we, see, we're doing a gomukhasana. You're doing gomukhasana cow face, you put your, one knee on the top. This is called Vaisasana. Left in the top, left hand goes high up, right hand goes to the back. Okay, let me show you to the back so you'll understand why it is such a powerful therapeutic balancing asana. When I'm able to sit down like this, my ankle is relaxed, knees are relaxed, hips are relaxed, my whole body, lower part of the body is relaxed. From here, Okay, my left knee is in the top. My left hand goes high up, right hand comes in the middle. So my hand will come down, I'm touching it, hooking it, I literally am handshaking each other. And I'm here, I'm talking, I'm breathing, I'm totally effortless. I can stay here, Minutes, hours, anytime. This is my effortless ease. I'm breathing out longer than breathing in. Next, you will see the most fundamental principle of yoga therapy. Now, my right knee is in the top. My right hand goes higher. Left hand is here in the middle. Let me just put the left hand in the middle. My right hand comes down, it touches, it hooks, and handshake each other. Look at, I'm equally on both sides, properly relaxed. I can able to sit down here for as long as I want. For you, you will see your one side is easier than the other side because the lateralization, the lack of balance, creating all the disease process. You can do all laying down asanas and you relax, you can do. What do you want to show? You have a lot of good yoga teachers here. Moirasan, Moiriasan, you can name asana, I can do very aspect, you know, I've been always being introduced. He's the one doing a Moirasan, he's talking, he's breathing. But it came to me, came to me, as if, or you see, if you can sit down, this is a wonderful yoga practice. This is called a malasan. If you can sit down in a malasan, which I do, I wake up in the morning, first thing, called ushapa, sit down in a malasan, I drink a glass of water, preferably from a copper vessel, sit down, within a short time, I have a bowel movement. Proper
proper sign of health. Strong digestion, easy elimination, a good night, dreamless sleep. From here, I put my hands together, separate my fingers. That's where my hands are relaxed. Extend my wrist, put one elbow inside, other elbow inside, I stay here. From here, as a primary therapeutic yoga, is able to get up without a support. If you can get up without a support, this is your sign of your health. And let me show you a few, few more signs of health. It is absolutely wonderful before you practice. Sign of well-being, sign of health is able to, able to sit down comfortably and able to get up unsupported. And you practice all the time. You go against the grain of your habit to activate the opposite side of the brain. So I'm comfortable standing like this. So I try putting my both the feet together. My ear, my shoulder, my hips and ankle in the same line. Mountain pose, Tadasana, Dandasana, the hand goes high up. I mean, totally, what was my spine straight, Merudanda Chal. When I fall down, I put my hand first. You know, it's a special fracture called a Kodis fracture. My hand, my eyes creates a balance. I'm a right handed. Let me take out my hand. It's a wonderful posture. It is called a Pashtim Namaskar. Put your hand to the back. Put a, a Pashtim Namaskar. Now see if I can stand on my left foot. I'm standing on my left foot. When you initially try, it will be almost impossible for you to do it. 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 40 seconds. But able to close my eyes, I can do it. If you can close your eyes, stand on one foot, with the hands in the back. This is a sign of your health. This is the sign of controlling every underlying chronic diseases you have. Do it in the opposite side, the right foot now. Standing for a long time. Initially, you may have to hold a chair or hold a hand. Close your eyes. You still get wobbly, almost impossible initially. Then what you do, put the proper balance, cross your feet, crossing your feet, if you can see, if you can sit down and get up. I can guarantee you, this is called money back guarantee. No disease will come to you. Cross the opposite side. We have, we have the health tracker here. I'm watching my health when I'm doing it. So I'm not telling you from without any, any data. Sit down, get higher. Ultimately, what the, a lot of cardiologists have done, if you can get up unsupported from the ground, that is your cardiovascular tolerance. There's a cardiologist in Brazil. He has sent on about 4,000 patients. Look at that. Try this. If you can do it with me, it will be wonderful for you. Sit down like this in the ground. Comfortable. I want to see. Let everybody put their video on. And three, you monitor them on a gallery view. From here, see if you can get up without trouble. Unassisted. Sit down again, opposite crossing your leg. So you make a fun. He said, if you put one hand to get up, you lose 25% of your life. You put two hands to get up, you lose 50% of your life. If you get one foot and one leg, you get 75% of, initially it will be difficult, but slowly you'll be able to get up. 
Next, <clears throat> putting head below your heart. When you put a head below your heart, your pressure in the intracranial pressure goes higher. Pressure inside your brain. Pressure inside the eyes goes higher. Pressure inside the carotid arteries goes higher. You cannot talk, you cannot breathe, you feel miserable. Keep your head down. Slowly. As long as you can. Five seconds is good. 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Slowly and slowly you'll see your flushing goes away. The breathing becomes normal. What happens, there is an activation called a battle receptor sensitivity. Bodies homeostasis. In fact, we call it a homeokinetics. Body's own healing process starts to come in. My pressure inside the brain comes down, pressure inside the eye comes down, neck comes down. My body goes high, I get up into a shishasham, shoulder step. Nobody touches me, nobody does anything. All you can do, you can do a, we call it a prasharita uttanasham. And then also the one thing you can do, say we do pranayama. I'm not doing all the pranayama practice and other, we'll do it another time, but I'll show it to you what are the pranayamas you need for different diseases. You do pranayama only sitting down and maybe in a chair, ground or laying down. But pranayama is a total relaxation. So what I will do, take a look. I put my hand in the back. I do a recursion. I do a tree pose, and when I'm in a tree pose, recursion, I'm doing a kapal bhati pranayama. You know, these are these are treatment. You know, in a diabetes, we do we do disease by disease next. That is called your reductionist holism. Vajrasana, Mundukasana, Shashankasana, massaging your pancreas. Say here, keep spreading your leg. Prasharito Uttan Asana. Why spread and supported hand, slowly put your head down. For us, you can get all the way down. With your head all the way down, but look at I'm talking, I'm breathing, I'm totally effortless. In fact, I'm so relaxed here, I can do a Kapalpati Pranayama here. After you finish a, a set of asanas, you can do, you can do a, and I can show it to you a little bit more. And we'll have a little time for question and answer. Let me show you a few more, a few more yoga therapy practices before we finish. Uh, you have seen a Brahmri Pranayam. Now you can incorporate a Brahmri Pranayam with your practice. Now, say, if you can sit down properly, you do a question namaskar. So let me show you how to do a beautiful question namaskar. Put your hand here, wherever your hand comes here, stay here. But if you can put your namaskar mudra, namaskar mudra will come in and slowly your hand will go high up. Longer and longer you stay, you keep your hands all the way high up and stay here. You know, the most, I don't know if you know this, the lifestyle related disorder. The biggest one today is a software, software engineers, IT workers, with their hunchback, they're looking in front of that. So I tell them, do your Pashtun Namaskar. In a Pashtun Namaskar, now we do call it Yog Mudra, or you can do Brahma Mudra, any mudras you can do. Neck, four postures. What you will do, 
you'll incorporate a Brahmri Pranayam with your exhalation. So you are breathing in, suffer first to breathe out. Breathing in, slowly put your neck to the back and breathe out to the sound of a Brahmri Pranayam. This way you extend your exhalation, which is parasympathetic, and take a look. I still have a lot of saliva in my mouth. It's a parasympathetic activation, relaxation response. And doing the side to side, looking all the way to the back, turn your neck. These are all the four postures of your Brahma Mudra. Let's do the last one. Turn your neck. So how do you do? Breathe out first. Deep breath in. Mm -hmm. so comfortable. Then when you can do exhalation longer than inhalation, then you do very rapid Bastrika Pranayam. Normally what you do Bastrika, you can do your hands high up, breathe out first, take a deep breath in, and then breathe out. We do a set of Bastrika Pranayam, Kapalbhati Pranayam, Unulom Vilom Pranayam, then you do a little Brahmri Pranayam, Ujjayi Pranayam, Sitali Pranayam, then Om Pranayam. That's a daily practice. We do another session when the time comes with a Pranayama, but you will see what a rapid Bastrika Pranayama does. Rapid Bastrika Pranayama, what it does, it washes away all the carbon dioxide, brings oxygen in, it creates a called a hyperventilation syndrome, then it causes a aerobic glycolysis. Glucose combines with oxygen, produces carbon dioxide, water, and we call it ATP, called adenosine triphosphate, which is an energy. Washes away all the lactic acid, pyruvic acid, pain producing substances. I'm relaxed with the Adhi Mudra, and I'll be doing a very rapid. Bastrika Pranayama. If you want to do it with me, please be welcome. Hey, 200 of them. I'm totally effortless. I'm breathing, I'm talking, I'm singing. That's what pranayama practices. No effort. We do it morning, jalneti, the water comes out. You do kapalbhati pranayama with all the mudras. Dhyana mudra, gana mudra, vayu mudra, control your pain, shunna mudra, prithibi mudra, varun mudra, shakti mudra, 
apna mudra apna vayu mudra linga mudra so what do you do about 20 to 50 sit down do few and just to show you we're running short of time let to show you how to do it we'll be doing effortless one per second and just keep on changing your hands we'll do another session on the mudras you will see essentially what happens when your body is physically prepared sthiram sukhamasana your breath is prepared effortless breathing exhalation longer than inhalation your mind enters into meditation so you don't practice meditation meditation will come to you then comes when you can elicit arambha sthiti and visharjan when you come to the visharjan then comes to you and you will see when the dhyan comes to you, you will be able to do your alternate nostril breathing on Lumbulambra without closing your nostril. We'll finish with that practice. It'll be a wonderful session. And you always practice the Jayu Pranayam, all Om Pranayam. You can do this in Mudana session. But before that, a couple of you want to see it. And I also want to show these are called, these are called show off asanas huh you have to show off that what a practice will bring it to you people talks about shishasana samangasana let's do moirasana see how many it can do with me moirasana put your hands here hands here bend your elbows put your body on the elbows, body goes in the front, and the whole body goes up, yep, stays. Murasi. You know, many of you know, I think Sri knows, and we know that also knows, and opened her surgery 20 years back. Last 15 years, I've not touched a single pill. I'm medication free, disease free. Every year I go for a cup, you know, you call my cardiac perfusion scan, everything is normal. Because then in the animal world, the women are more than powerful, huh? Mayuri asana. In a Mayuri asana, you get into a Padmasana. From a Padmasana, you do a Mayuri asana. But what you notice is it, I'm talking, I'm breathing, my Anomaya Kosha and Pranomaya Kosha is in sync. Unulom Vilom Pranayam, alternate nostril breathing, left nostril is controlled by the right brain, right brain is intuitive, Right brain is female, right brain is cooling. Left nostril breathing is called your Chandranadi, moon energy. Right nostril is controlled by the <coughs> left brain. Left brain is analytical, male, heating. Right nostril is Suranadi, sun energy. Sympathetic, parasympathetic. So the way to do it, bring the balance. It balances your both side of the brain. Wonderful practice for dementia, wonderful practice for Alzheimer's disease, hypertension, balancing both sides of the body. You know, we lose our memory, we call it dementia. We lose our focus. We lose our activation of other side of the brain. Left hand do a dhana mudra or a gana mudra. Right hand, close your right nostril. You don't have to close all the way down, just below your nostril. Breathe out to your left nostril. Breathe in through the left nostril. Close your left nostril with a ring finger and little finger. Breathe out through right nostril. Bring in through your right nostril. 
bring out your left nostril. Do it exhalation longer than inhalation. You will always see your one nostril is more open than the other. It's Ida and Pingala. In alternate nostril breathing, your Shushul Manari opens up. Next you do, you know, you practice as long as you can. In a daily practice, we do one hour, 25 minutes of asanas, 25 minutes of pranayama, 10 minutes of meditation. Next, you put an index finger and middle finger on your in between eyebrows and the third eye. Close your eyes, bring your focus into your third eye. Then use a super brain yoga. Use your left hand, hold on to your right ear lobe. And then you do alternate nostril breathing. You have no idea, within a short time, you will be in a transcendental state. You have no idea where you are. You will be entering in the total sense of meditation. These are meditative practices, balancing both sides of the brain. And this meditative practice will last with you throughout the whole day. And then to be your properly correct, you do the other hand. It's a wonderful experience now. You can do your with your left hand, you can left hand, and the right hand you hold in your left ear low, focusing it and keep doing your alternate nostril breathing. Ujjayi Pranayam is an excellent pranayam. You can do Ujjayi Pranayam and you can do Jalandhar Bandha. Jalandhar Bandha is bringing the chin down to your chest. It activates your para, your carotid sinuses. Then you do your left nostril breathing. Totally, Ujjayi Pranayam is activation of vagus nerve. It's very good for your snoring, very good for your sleep apnea. So the way to do it is that let me show you one time so you'll understand what I'm talking about. Breathe out first. I do all with my eyes closed. Deep breath in. Completely breathe out. Relaxing, it even activates your Udyani band, abdominal lock, Jalandhar band, and Chandravedi pranayama. All parasympathetic activation. Let's finish with a meditative Anulom Vilom pranayama without closing your nostril and guidance through your breath, just a couple of minutes. Then we'll have about five, 10 minutes for a question answer. I'd like you to put it in the chat and Sri, you can read that for me or you can go into the gallery mode and we'll talk about it. Keep your spine straight, eyes closed, touch your index finger and thumb. First, visualize your breath. Visualize your breath is coming in through your nostril. The nose is a filter, your air is getting filtered. Nose is your personal air conditioner. Outside air is warm, it is cooling it down. Outside what is cool is warming it up. Air is going to the side of the nostril called a turbinate. Turbinate, there is a developing a jet effect, so vortex, vibrating the mucus of the, your sinuses, secreting nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a powerful vasodilator. Nitric oxide is a mediator of your parasympathetic tongue. Acetylcholine, cyclic GMP, nitric oxide is a mediator of your parasympathetic tongue. Breath is coming behind your throat, upper part of the lung, middle part of the lung, lower part of the lung, level of your belly button, which is cable kumhak, 
Stay there for a while. Visualize your breath coming from lower part of the lung. Middle part of the lung, upper part of the lung, behind your throat, coming out through your nostril. Breath is a carrier of prana. Prana is a subtle energy, keeps us awake, alert and alive. Breath is not a prana. Breath is a carrier of prana. Breath is like electric cable and prana is like electricity. For yoga, the prana goes to everywhere, our whole body does breathing. Visualize the breath is picking up prana. Prana is coming through your nose inside your body. Then the prana is going to the organ of healing. For me, prana is going to my heart. I'm having a healing of my heart, pranic healing. If you have a back pain, you visualize prana is going to your back, causing the healing of your back. If you have a diabetes, visualize prana is coming through your diabetes and for your pancreas. It's a wonderful pranic healing. Then in silence, practice alternate nostril breathing without closing your nostril. Initially, it looks almost impossible, but is entirely doable. Visualize your breathing out through your left nostril. Breathe in through your left nostril. Breathe out through your right nostril. Breathe in through your right nostril. Then in silence, you keep on doing a few cycles. And because of the lack of time, I'll give you a signal when to finish. And then we'll finish with this practice. This is a practice to do longer at home. Now slowly bring your hands in front of you, touch your little finger and thumb, then separate your ring finger, middle finger and index finger. This is called a Padma Mudra. Padma Mudra unites your body, mind and spirit. Slowly bring your hand close to your heart. Heart is the side of your soul. And we tell all the time, memorize by heart. Heart and brain is connected. A practice of yoga therapy gives us a well-being. It's a wellness. It's a physical, mental, spiritual health, which is in a balance, unlocking the power of medicine cabinet of my mind. All the medicine comes from mind. Slowly bring your hand in front of your heart chakra, bow your head down, Say namaste, I honor the divinity within you. And again, finish with another palming and cupping. Rub your hands, rub your hands. When you feel the warmth of your hands, if you're wearing glasses, remove your glasses, take the hands like a cup, put it over the cup. Massage your forehead, massage your arms, massage your face, massage your ear in the back, in the front. External ear canals, activation of your auricular branch of the vagus nerve. Massage in the front, activation of your carotid sinuses. Massage in the back. It's a wonderful practice. Thank you.